contagious. It's not that coronavirus or something. No, no. It's a, it was an intestinal uh, virus. Um, and it, I got it from something I ate. It was probably some virus. Or the doctor says it probably was on lettuce or something that I ate. But um, it wasn't from your food down at the hotel. No, no. But I've been traveling so much that probably somewhere I ate along the way. But um, real quick on the spa. The thing that's exciting about that is we took it over from Gould's, which is a local uh, brand and family that has spas here. And um, when we took it over, it was ranked 89. And um, we took it over, redid it, um, rebranded it. We, we manage and run it now. And last year, we came in at number seven. And truth be told, I'll admittedly say I thought it was a fluke that uh, we had come in at number seven. Um, but uh, we moved up one, one notch uh, to number six uh, this year, so we're really excited. We just redid it again. Um, this, uh, I think we finished in August or September. And we spent about a half a million dollars on it, redoing it. Uh, one of the cool things, and I actually tomorrow for the first time we'll get to try it out. I haven't had the opportunity to try it. But we bought a Vichy bed. Um, they're made in Italy. Uh, they're about $35,000 for one of these beds. And I'm, I'm excited to find out what this bed does. Um, but, what are you uh, going to take a nap during office hours or something? Yeah, yeah something like that. <laughs> um, but you know, that's one of the, the bad things is you have to test things. So, you know. Uh, but we've had it now for, I guess, um, I think about, well, since. Since August, we've had it, and I just haven't been able to get in to try it and see what it's all about. And uh, so I'm excited to see what it's all about. Anyway, um, so you're going to be helping me today. Okay. And uh, as I'm talking, you're going to make up questions. Okay? And if they're good questions, then you get this envelope here. Okay. And every time one of them answer one of the questions you come up with, they get one of these envelopes. Answered correctly. Answered correctly, right? And of course, he'll be the judge as to whether they answer correctly. Okay. okay. Are you up for it? Sure. Okay. So I'll give you real quick a little bit about me, and then we'll talk a little bit about what's going on. Um, I might break it up a little bit and talk uh, towards the end a, a little bit about what's going on in Dallas. We've got a, a new Peabody project going on there, and so that's really had a lot of my attention. That's a done year. deal. Um, we will know in the next 30 days. Good luck. Um, yeah, so it's a $180 million hotel project, so it's a big deal. Uh, a little bit about me. Um, I grew up in the Caribbean. Uh, both my parents were in the Air Force. My father is a retired colonel, mother a retired major. Uh, and. Uh, Grew up in the island, so I'm kind of an island boy. Um, mostly uh, Virgin Guarda, St. John, and Puerto Rico. Went to school in Puerto Rico. My sister and I uh, would take a plane from, well, we'd take a boat from Virgin Guarda to Tortola, and then we'd take a plane from Tortola to Puerto Rico, and then in Puerto Rico, we'd be picked up and we'd board, go to boarding school all week, and then on Friday, go back home. That was our life for several years, my sister and I. Uh, but it, it was a fun life, way to grow up. Um, it was very tough having my bedroom uh, where I looked out the window and I had a balcony and about where that wall is was where the ocean was. And, and that, was, that was really tough uh, growing up that way. <laughs> Nobody believes that, huh? Yeah. No, I, I guess it was really hard for my parents because my sister and I would sneak out often. It was very easy to sneak out. There were always parties along the beach, so. And we always joked in, in, in the islands that if you can see over the bar, so if you were tall enough to see over the bar, you were old enough to drink. That, that, that's the rule. There was no age, so. Uh, I'm not supposed to be saying these things, am I? Well, everyone here is over 21. Oh, are they? Okay. Yeah. They can all drink, right? They, they are now. They all now. Okay. Um, 
Anyway, uh, I went to college. I went to two different schools. I went to school in upstate New York, got my associate's degree in hotel and restaurant management. I went to Florida at FIU, got my bachelor's degree in hotel and restaurant management, went to college on an athletic scholarship. Um, and uh, um, when I graduated, I went right into the hotel business um, and went to work for Intercontinental Hotels and ended up transferring and worked in South America, worked in Venezuela, in Colombia, Brazil. Um, and, uh, if I back up just a little bit, um, uh, during my, when I graduated from junior college and had my associate's degree, I got chosen, I was one of 10 students, this is how I really aged myself, I was one of 10 students chosen to be part of the college resort of Disney. Um, and there were only 10 people back then. Uh, why are you laughing? <laughs> what was that, like 1943 or something? <laughs> and I, I think there are five, 6,000 now, if not more, but there were only 10 of us back then. And in my office, there's actually a picture of the 10 of us. And um, I got to be Dale, you know, Chip and Dale? Not, not the exotic dancers, <laughs> the chipmunks. Um, uh, but I got to be Dale, which was a lot of fun. It was really tough because my name being Doug, you know, they come up and they ask you for your autograph. <coughs> and so you start signing and then I realize it's not Doug, it's Dale, you know. But um, I love working for Disney, learned a lot, and it's, it's amazing that a lot of the, what I learned in the short time I worked for Disney, I still refer back to today in my career. So uh, anyway, uh, I worked for Intercontinental Hotels, got, got the opportunity to work in Europe with Intercontinental, in uh, Germany and in London. Um, and, and I'm really aging myself because I worked in Miami with Intercontinental Hotels and before Ambassadors. And my hotel was the first hotel to be computerized on the front desk with Intercontinental Hotels. And that was back in 1978. And oddly enough, for some reason, the co company, corporate uh, Intercontinental <coughs> Hotels, which back then, corporate was in New York in the Pan Am building. Nobody here knows who, what Pan Am is. Um, Pan Am was probably the largest airline in the world at that time, and they owned Intercontinental Hotels, and their corporate offices were in New York. And um, uh, everybody in corporate thought that I was a computer expert because I was really the only one that had, I was the front office manager that had a computerized front office. So because of that, I got to travel to a lot of different places and help them install their front office systems. Um, I really was very computer illiterate, but I knew probably more than most because I was the first one to ever get to see it. So anyway, it was fun. I got to be in, live in London for a while and in Germany and Munich and uh, in South America, Brazil, uh, installing you know front office systems. So that was a lot of fun. Um, then I uh, joined Hyatt Hotels, and uh, with Hyatt, um, I worked in Richmond, Virginia. And funny enough, back then the general manager. It's funny. My father said to me when I graduated, "Be nice to people on your way up, because you'll never know if you'll meet them on the way down." But my boss in uh, Richmond, Virginia was a guy named Robert Colombo. Robert Colombo's parents or father owned Yellow Cab in New York, so part of the Colombo family. Anyway, Robert Colombo was a guy who started the Fuzies. Remember Fuzies, Italian restaurants? With a yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, Fuzies. Yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, I think he got it all the way up to like 30 restaurants or whatever and sold it. And, but he was, he was my, my boss at the Hyatt in Richmond. And, um, he was general manager or president of the Plaza in New York and many other things. Well, funny enough, here it is, years later, 30 years later, and he's one of our partners on the project in Dallas. Um, I happened to just call on him on one of my trips to Dallas he has a restaurant in Dallas, and we had dinner, and we talked about the project in Dallas, and hence he got involved, and he's a part of it. So never, never know who you're going to 
need or meet along the way. So be nice to people along the way. Anyway, um, after Richmond, Virginia, I went to Washington, D.C. and opened the Park Hyatt in Washington. And then uh, I got a phone call from Daryl Hartley Leonard, who was the president of Hyatt back then, and a guy named John D. Simone and um, uh, Ed Raven. And uh, I'm in the office of the general manager, and they said, Doug, we need you to go down to the Cayman Islands to open the Hyatt in the Cayman Islands. I was like, well, great. And they said, the reason why we're choosing you is because you speak Spanish. So I grew up living in the Caribbean, went to school in Puerto Rico. I speak, read, and write Spanish fluently. It's actually my first language. But I started laughing, and they said, why are you laughing? And I said, because they don't speak Spanish in the Cayman Islands. It's a British protected <laughs> island, and uh, it's actually mostly made up of Scottish people. Um, well, they don't, they don't speak English, do they? No. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I went and I opened the Hyatt in the Cayman Islands. Uh, lived there for about a year and a half. That was really tough, living in the Cayman. Um, because again, my apartment or condo that was about from here to the wall to the ocean. And that was very rough, doing that every day, having to wake up and see that. So, uh, you, you don't feel sorry for me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, from the Cayman Islands, um, I went to Baltimore and I joined a company that doesn't exist anymore called Stouffer Hotels. Uh, the company was owned by Nestle's um, and